Securing your network is essential, but it isn't difficult. Even if you are not the best friends with technology, you'd be surprised how insecure your home network is and how vulnerable you are on an open Wi-Fi. If somebody gets into your home network, they could potentially collect your private information or send death threats to the President of the United States from your IP address. If you connect to a hostile network, your phone could be controlled by hackers forever and you wouldn't notice until you lose access to all your accounts and end up facing insane credit card debt. And if you somehow think that cybersecurity doesn't concern you, by 2021 the global cost of cybercrime will reach $6 trillion. Oh, and that's $6 trillion every year. This network security tutorial will be easy. The goal is to help as many people as possible secure their networks because security of computers also has something of an equivalent to herd immunity. If everybody around you has a secure network, each individual network is that much more difficult to target. So share this video with your friends and neighbors or just pass on the knowledge to others. If you like this security series, support it on Patreon because YouTube hates me. The first step you need to make is to make sure your home network is encrypted and all default passwords are changed. This is a very easy step and the most effective one. If you only do this, you're already way ahead in your security. The easiest way to access your router settings is to log into your router's web interface. This is usually an IP address of your router. You can find it displayed on your router or in the documentation that arrived with it in the original packaging. If you can't find it, you can also use your PC or phone to get your router's IP address. On Mac, Linux and mobile devices, you can find your router's default gateway in the network settings of your connections. On Windows, select start and type CMD. Hit enter and Windows command prompt should pop up. In the command prompt, type in ipconfig and press enter. If you are connected to your Wi-Fi router wirelessly or through an Ethernet cable, your router's IP address will be displayed as default gateway. Type this IP address into your browser URL bar where you normally type websites. It will ask you for an admin name and password. This should be the default password that is displayed on your router or on a sticker that has your Wi-Fi's name and password you use to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Beware that the admin password is not the same as the password you use to log into your Wi-Fi. Hard guess is that your router's admin name and password will be admin admin. Every router firmware will look slightly differently, so you cannot follow any particular device that would suit all. The same principles and settings, however, apply equally to all firmware interfaces. When you log into your router's web interface, the first thing to do is to go to security settings. Here, choose the strongest encryption available. This should be WPA or WPA2. If your router doesn't support this encryption, I recommend you buy a more modern router. This is absolutely essential as the older standard, WEP encryption, has been broken years ago and opting for no encryption leaves your network open for anyone to connect to, spy on and exploit. Encryption, however, only works with a strong password. Chances are high that you never changed the default password or you made it something easily guessable. Make a passphrase that is at least 16 characters long and easily memorable. The longer the passphrase, the better. When you change your passphrase, you'll need to enter it on all your devices in order to reconnect them to your Wi-Fi network. You should also change your Wi-Fi's name to something that doesn't reveal your router's model or manufacturer and doesn't identify it with your household. So not your pet's name or street name with house number. Be generic as a Marvel movie. This can be done by changing your Wi-Fi SSID. Changing your SSID is not bulletproof, but it does make it harder for hackers to guess what router you use and search for vulnerabilities in it to exploit it. Don't leave your router's interface yet. You also need to change your default admin name and password so that hackers cannot get access to your router's settings and change them to get access to your network. Again, use something that doesn't identify you and for your password, use a strong passphrase. Make sure it is different from your Wi-Fi network passphrase. If you want, you can easily write down these passwords and names and store them somewhere safe in your home. If you lose your passwords, you can easily factory reset your router to its default settings. There is usually a button for this somewhere on your router that you can press with a pen or a needle. You should also update your firmware. This should be possible to do from the router's web interface. Router firmware doesn't usually come with many updates, so you don't have to check this option too often. But if you haven't checked for updates since you bought your router, it is time to do it now. 
If your router supports it, enable Firewall. Firewall is a crucial part of secure networking for all connected devices. You shouldn't use any device without a firewall. On Windows, search for Firewall settings and make sure your firewall is always on for all types of networks. Set all the Wi-Fi networks you connect to that are outside of your home to public networks. This increases the firewall protection of your PC. On Linux, the easiest way to enable firewall is to use GUI. On macOS, enable your firewall under security and privacy settings. For mobile operating systems, use a third-party application firewall to block all network connections for unwanted apps, even default and root apps. The best application firewall for Android is NetGuard. The best one for iOS is Lockdown. If you need to use a public network, use it with Tor or VPN. Using a VPN or Tor on phone will disable your application firewall. There is no way around this, which makes mobile web browsing way too insecure. Web browsing on desktop is safer, so to stay secure, I wouldn't recommend connecting your phone to a public network in a hotel or airport. You can trust Tor, but most VPNs cannot be trusted and the ones you can are often paid. The only free VPN I would recommend for this purpose only is Proton VPN. The best paid VPN service when it comes to security and transparency is Mulvad, but it's always far more superior to use Tor. Now this alone protects you against the vast majority of threats you'll ever face. Changing other settings adds more inconvenience for smaller marginal increase in security. If you care about those margins, you can set MAC address filtering. The best way to approach this is to first connect all the devices that you regularly use on your home network and then only allow their connected MAC addresses. This does make it more difficult for other devices to try to connect to your network. However, someone within the range of your Wi-Fi could use tools to observe your network's traffic, find the whitelisted MAC addresses, and change their MAC address to, to one that matches with your whitelist. Some people recommend hiding your SSID, but I can't vouch for this one. Hiding your Wi-Fi doesn't stop its broadcast and doesn't make it invisible to network analysis tools, which are available for free and require little skill to operate. It also adds unnecessary inconvenience on your part as you'd have to manually type the full name of your network on any new device. Another hidden security enhancement for your router is to change its default IP address. This makes it more difficult for malicious scripts in your web browser targeting routers at their local IP addresses. If your router's gateway is 192.168.01, you can change it to 192.168.0150. If somebody is already on your network or has a malware on your device connected to your network, they could still determine your router's gateway. So this again is not a silver bullet, but it does reduce your attack surface a little bit. Make sure that all websites you visit and all connections you make are encrypted with HTTPS protocol. There is a good browser extension, HTTPS Everywhere, that you can set to block all unencrypted traffic. Equally important is to encrypt DNS traffic. Most DNS queries are unprotected. Much like most, HTTP traffic used to be unencrypted before the Snowden leaks in 2013. This standard is fortunately changing for DNS as well. There are several methods to use for secure DNS encryption. The one I would recommend would be DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS. This step is easy, but it is not available on all systems yet. Microsoft is planning to release Windows support soon, but in the meantime, you can enable DOH on Firefox in network settings. By default, Firefox will use Cloudflare, but if you want to use a more decentralized option, Privacy Tools has a list of encrypted DNS providers. All you need is to copy their DNS server and paste it into the field for DNS address in your Firefox settings. The same mechanism applies to pretty much any DNS settings app that supports DNS encryption. The only caveat is that you need to enable DNS encryption for every individual network. Android Pi or later supports DNS over TLS for all networks, which you can find under Advanced in Network and Internet Settings. Older Android devices support DNS encryption for individual networks. This requires to follow traditional mechanism of replacing your DNS servers with the ones that you choose for handling encrypted DNS queries. On iOS devices, a recommended open source DNS client is DNS Cloak. Mac and Linux let you easily configure your DNS in network connections under system preferences. Advanced users are also recommended to set up a Pi-hole on their home network. 
Pi Hole is a Raspberry Pi device that you can connect to your router and use it as a network-wide ad blocker and blacklist any unwanted domains from ever making connections to your network. This is an extremely useful tool if you want to eliminate all connections from Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple, and to prevent their trackers from reaching your network or phoning home with their data. Setting up a Pi Hole isn't difficult, and getting a Raspberry Pi won't cost you more than a couple of bucks. There are plenty of tutorials on the web, so if you want to go down this road, feel free to explore. Pretty much all consumer routers ship with proprietary firmware. This is a problem if you're worried about government backdoor. So if you want to eliminate the chances of easy bulk collection for a three-letter government agency, install an open-source third-party firmware. Running an open-source firmware gives you more security options on top of being more transparent and without secret government backdoor. The best open-source firmware out there is currently OpenWRT. They have detailed documentation on how to install this firmware on supported devices, and there is a lot in there, so I'm not gonna cover it in this video. But since we are getting into the territory of government hacking and mass surveillance, I'm gonna address some tips for this threat model. The most secure network is one that doesn't exist. That is why it is most recommended to ditch Wi-Fi altogether and use Ethernet cables for all devices, including your phone. Get an Ethernet adapter for USB-C or Lightning connection and plug it into your phone. Disable Wi-Fi connections on your router completely. This can be done via its web interface, but some routers have a hardware switch to disable wireless connection. On your mobile and laptop devices, delete conne old connections. If you connect to a hostile network, somebody could track your location by sniffing your past connections. They could also create a fake Wi-Fi hotspot with the same name as your trusty network and trick, your, and trick your device into connecting to it automatically. If you expect to be targeted by an advanced adversary, using a home network is out of the question. You should only use someone else's network, preferably without their active awareness. On this network, you should boot up from Tails and only use Tor for all work and communication. I covered Tails in my anonymity tutorial and the link for that video is in the description. You should change your locations often and avoid places with active surveillance cameras. Open car parks with reachable Wi-Fi are a good option if you can stay in your car and boot to Tails from your laptop. For this thread model, only properly encrypted communication channels and securely obfuscated identities can be considered to be, tr to be used. Additionally, you can use tools like Wireshark and learn to observe the network traffic for any potentially suspicious activities. If there is anything suspicious, seize all activities and purge all connections and devices. And that's it for my network security tutorial for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you find this tutorial useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and neighbors, and comment down below with your questions or just simply engage for the sake of the almighty algorithm.